Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 and this video I continue my commemoration of the Apollo 11 lunar landing 51 years ago today uh, since I'm recording this on July 20th and I decided to make the three lunar lander proposals, modern lunar lander proposals I guess you could say, um, that NASA presented. There's the SpaceX one, there's the Dynetics one, and then the Blue Origin combo one with uh, some Northrop bits and some other bits. Uh, so I'm going to try to make them all in Blender and present them. But the easiest one was, of course, Starship, because I had already done a Starship model. And I have so made the full lunar lander instead of my alternate lunar lander, even though I still think that's a better idea. But uh, anyway, um, so here it is, except I didn't do the landing legs. Actually, those are Kerbal Reusability Expansion landing legs because I was quite satisfied with them. And I don't think we have a clear idea about what kind of landing legs they're actually going to use. We've got artist impressions, but uh, that's no guarantee, really. And so uh, this is close enough, and I expect the the proposal to change over time. I know I know people can land it with the landing legs as they are, but you know uh, we'll see. Uh, we've got 37 engines here. I still haven't merged the engines into something, so they are all gonna fire, and it's gonna take uh, a little bit of time to get to orbit because of all the lag, and that'll give us time to talk about things. So ignition. And it's loud. Actually, that might be one flaw. And launch. So, as just a regular Super Heavy, we'll reserve some fuel and we'll see whether we can get into lunar orbit without refueling in Earth orbit. Let's start with that. I've reduced the mass of the Starship uh, body. It's 80 tons in this case. There is no separate crew pod that's just integrated in because actually we would probably expect them to transfer crew after it gets into orbit around the moon so that there's no need for an ejection system or something like that so that's my assumption uh, to lighten things up obviously we don't have the fins either uh, which is good because I hate the fins anyway <laughs> but uh, yep we are carrying both sea level and vacuum engines because otherwise this can't get into orbit uh, yeah, there's just not enough thrust to get into orbit unless we have both the sea level and vacuum engines. We do have the additional thrusters built into the body, and they are methane oxygen thrusters now. Uh, I say thrusters, engines. They produce about 2,000 kilonewtons, which should be enough for the final phase of uh, touchdown. Uh, they get about 340 seconds ISP, which is much less than the main engines, obviously. We are not carrying substantial payload right now. Uh, we have a little payload just to test another bit of functionality. And you can sort of guess what that is. I have not tested this out yet. I do know that without the sea level engines, the vacuum engines produce about a thrust weight ratio of 0.46 and that's really, really not going to get us to orbit. So just don't have it a thrust weight ratio without the sea level ones. So we wouldn't be able to make a direct landing on the moon like this. But maybe we can get into orbit at least, which would be good. And then I'll use the Dulcinea Aerospike SSTO to launch it such that we can reserve all the fuel, or most of the fuel, and try to do a direct landing like that. Because I really, really, really don't want to refuel this in orbit of the Earth. I mean, it's just, it's just a painful process. We don't have any docking ports on this right now either. I did uh, create the RCS thrusters so that they'll be good for docking instead of the the normal starship layout, which has to be that way because, you know, the bottom is heat shielded and everything. In this case, the thruster layout is more ideal for a lander. That's the RCS thrusters, I mean. So I probably won't uh, link this model just yet. 
there's some touch-ups that I need to do. I, w I want to maybe contemplate using Substance Painter for this. I'm still using the old textures, but there's flaws in them, like the textures don't really line up correctly, there's seams and everything. So I'll see. Oh, I should probably uh, shut down so it's reserving that much. Separation and ignition. Okay. Even with the sea level engines, we've only got 0.88 right now. I did lock the gimbling on the vacuum engines, so without the sea levels we're going to be just using RCS. Okay. It's got nice little windows. I beveled the windows. I'm not too sure that was a good idea, but the interior is just a Mark 1-3 command pod interior. I didn't make a special interior right now, and that's because, uh, well, I keep messing up the interior somehow when I try to make the custom one for Starship. Okay, I think we can shut down the sea levels, and we have to activate the RCS, otherwise we won't be able to control anything. Hopefully they're up to the task, but it's rough. They, the thruster power is, uh, I mean, the thrust is 2.4 kilonewtons, so it's a lot. It's not a minor amount of thrust here. Yeah, but it is wiggling. Well, let's see, attitude adjustment, let's try even less stopping time. I don't know if that'll help. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, well, that's gonna be rough. Uh, so, we have enough to transfer, but we wouldn't have enough to land, and also the RCS is worrying me. <laughs> um, uh, hmm. I mean, we wouldn't have enough to make orbit either. We can transfer, but not make orbit, so. Interesting. Uh, let's just go with the airspike SSTO and see if I can reserve enough to also land because yeah we can get there but we can't do anything once we're there anyway. So let's see what the Dulcinea can do. Not the Dulcinea. Why am I calling it the Dulcinea? That's a different thing. Uh, the Daenerys. Daenerys. Shoot. Dulcinea is something completely different. Okay this time we'll make it right. Right? Well we've underfueled the starship to 65%, which gets it down to 880 tons, which is what uh, this Aerospike SSD is currently rated to bring up to orbit while still getting itself back down. We could probably improve upon that if we put the Monument Launcher engine at the bottom, but I'm not doing that. Anyway, we will see. So here we go with this version. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. This will be quieter, I think. Though the plume is not going to be very magnificent. Alright, launch. So basically, what I'd like you to imagine is that we got into orbit and refueled it somewhat. But this is what's going on. I did not remove the sea level engines. Because they would probably have to remain in order for it to be launched by Super Heavy. Okay, throttling down a bit. Okay, wow, we're really getting the G-forces. Let's throw down there. But again, the expectation is this would be delivered to orbit without crew, so... Okay, I'm gonna unlock the fuels up here now in preparation. Also, start running the fuel cell. Okay, that's fine orbit and separation. RCS and hopefully we are puffing forward. Uh, oh, it's not enabled here. Puffing forward, there we go. I might need to up the RCS thruster power on this. <laughs> 
doesn't feel super powerful right now. Gotta check that out. Okay, so here we would have 292 for deorbiting and then another 290 for actually setting down safely. And of course this has the brakes, the big flaps to get more drag. But anyway, I won't do that part this time around. So, yep. Yeah. It should be able to deliver this to orbit while coming back, but we'll handle that some other time. You see 7,809 meters per second really with this and that's with the sea level so let's turn the sea level off. 8,072 so we need 3,100 to get there let's say uh, let's say 4,000 altogether to get to lunar orbit. That leaves us with 4,000 more. So if you're really really good you could land and then take off again like that. I'm not that good so we're probably talking about landing and not quite taking off and of course we've got minimal payload so with a hundred ton payload uh, not a hundred ton payload they said 50 ton 50 ton payload you would definitely not be able to get back to orbit again uh, with this fuel load but we we aren't fully fueled we are only 65 percent fuel that doesn't mean you get you know a whole lot more delta v right once you get to 8,000 meters per second in the stage the additional fuel that you pile in uh, it has marginal benefit. I'd estimate that this could have 10,000 though. So this lander version. I mean one of the stuff that's uh, burdening it otherwise is like the flaps and all. Oh and all the heat shielding. Right. All the heat tiles are going to burden the regular starship in a way that this lander wouldn't be burdened. Okay anyway uh, let's plot for the moon and see how we do. Is currently it's turning speed with the RCS. Well, we could increase that with more leeway on the max stopping time. There is a thrust report that's currently covered up by this leg. I might want to move that thrust report. <laughs> I don't know about the six legs thing. Four legs is so much better, but anyway. Okay, well, uh, thrust reports are sufficient to sell the fuel down anyway. Okay, ignition. And off we go to the moon. But yeah, with these thrust reports, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to land it. On the other hand, it's going to be lighter when I end up landing it, so maybe it won't be too bad. There's no gimbling on the little thrust reports on the body itself either, so. It's all RCS as far as turning is concerned. We do have some especially roll usage. I didn't really position the thrusters ideally for roll, so there is that. They should be further apart, like these ones on the nose. Oh, and just a reminder, the engines aren't mine either, they're just from the real engines pack, so that has the Raptor sea level and vacuum engines, and I just use those. It's really just the body here that's mine. The 100 tons, the body is 80 tons, and then the rest is the engines and the landing legs. So that brings us, and uh, the payload. The payload is very light though, it's like 4 tons, uh, maybe even less than that. Okay, on kill rotation. throttle. I guess we could check on the map how we're doing. Okay, that's good enough. So 376 tons. And again, starting at 880 tons. So this isn't how much would be going over to the moon if Starship was fully fueled. They'll have more like that. 
more than 400 tons, but this is how we are right now, which is still pretty darn heavy. Uh, I'll go around this way, not the free return trajectory or anything. The sort of tiling on the nose and tail is mainly from the thrust uh, to protect from the heat of the thrusters and of course the engines. Oh, oh, I passed it a little bit, but that's fine. I'm gonna switch off the engines and just do an RCS burn here. So, I'll meet up with you once we get to the moon. Okay, we are approaching the moon. You can see Earth in the distance. And... The moon's probably shadowed right now, because we're on the nighttime side of it. Boy, did it take a long time to do that mid-course adjustment with the RCS, though. Okay, so let's see. Retrograde. Then we'll want the vacuum engines on. 4,800. Well, yeah, well, I mean, we still need to use 800 to make orbit, and then we're back to 4,000. Okay, ignition. But we'll keep it to fairly low thrust. Still, 0.6 Gs of acceleration. Okay. And we better shut down there. Okay, so that is our orbit. And I think we'd like to land... Uh, over here somewhere. Now I did give the vacuum engines more ignitions than they used to have, so there's that. That's good. Descent orbit insertion should probably be done with the RCS ports. Okay, I think that's enough of the descent path, so I'm gonna throttle down the RCS there. And we're going to try and land here, so we might as well get started on thinking about that. Uh, 13 minutes to there, but, you know, the these engines aren't going to take very long. They're only 2 minutes to burn 4,000, so that's... Well, of course, we're going to throttle down, but still, the Raptor vacuums don't throttle down that much. So we're going to have to switch to the internal body thrusters pretty soon. And again, they're not as efficient, so that's going to hurt the uh, Delta V. But anyway, let's see. It seems like with uh, one minute burn time, we could probably start burning right here to just ensure that we are over this area. Okay, so surface negative. And if it turns out that we have trouble controlling it, I'm gonna bring up the gimbling on this. These. Let's make sure I've got two at least. So we can activate gimbling in an emergency just a little bit. Oh, uh, it's symmetrized. Okay, that's fine. Alright. So, but right now it's locked still. All right, so selling the fuel down. Okay, haulage complete and ignition at minimum. We've got 0.6 Gs at minimum. Currently we are 290 tons and dropping. Seems a bit rocky. Much more so than it would seem like this. And we're bringing the orbit in to a location that might be very rocky. Oh, well, so far so good on the RCS. Okay, that's probably enough of that. I think we'll try and do the rest with the internal thrusters. Um, well, okay, activate engine, I don't know. Okay, 
So we'll just forego that one and see if the internal thrusts work. Much less delta V, as you notice. Gotta keep an eye out for how much it's gonna, how much time it's gonna take for them to spool up. Keeping everything properly settled, and how about ignition now? Oh, that took a while. Okay. Okay, switching to SAS. And we've got good throttling on these, but maybe not good enough. Uh, not good enough to throttle all the way down. Okay. Oh, come on. Oh, ah, we bounced a bit. Okay, okay, just stay there. All right, all right, all right, all right. Settle down. So how much delta V will we have on the vacuum thrusters now? 1,900. Well, maybe we can get back to orbit. But let's first take a look at the special feature here. Um, so I've got a cargo bay area. And I put a Gemini pod with some trivial fuel tanks. You know, decouple the node on it. And so that'll drop it onto the platform. Now, I don't think this is really going to work properly, but we'll try it. Down. Open. Oh, uh, no, I didn't bring it along. Gosh darn it. It's tough. So we've got an elevator thing. As you can see, the edges of it have a cl have colliders on it. So, you know, but I think it's animated too quickly to make it work. But uh, anyway, I'll reverse it so you can see the, uh, you can see that little lip closes and then up it goes. And in it definitely has a collider. You saw it pushed the pushed the pod back there, <laughs> but it didn't pull the pod along with it. Now the pod is just dumped in there. That's awkward. Anyway, so this is the cargo bay. The, the walls have colliders as well. It's surrounded. Um, but the pod was docked to the top. You can't dock it to the platform because it won't go along with that. Uh, you can't uh, attach it to a animated the animated portion. So uh, to try to drop it onto the platform and have the platform bring it out, but that didn't work out. Well, I'll keep trying to work on that. So that's one thing that uh, that's one reason I'm not releasing it just yet. I want to work on this, and I think slowing down this whole thing it, it just probably goes too fast. Now, the door doesn't have a collider on it, so it's possible the Gemini capsule will pop out while we're trying to launch for orbit, but let's try it anyway. Okay, so SAS is on, and ignition. Again, so that Gemini pod and a little bit of fuel with it is all we had for... We want to go 90 for payload. So it's like four tons at most. I think I've already not done a good enough job here. Need to turn a little bit sharper than that. But with a full fuel load it would definitely be able to land and return to lunar orbit. That seems likely. Oh, I think the the Gemini capsule's little lander legs are poking through. That's awkward. Lots of TWR though. We're throttled down as much as possible. Actually, I probably 
Yeah, well, I, I didn't uh, set the throttling on the vacuum engines. That was part of realism overhaul. And it's probably generous. Uh, they can throttle down to like 25, 20, 25%, but I think the real things only go down to 40, 50. So, yeah, this is pretty general, generous throttling here. We're not gonna quite... Well, maybe I can shut down and coast a bit, but I don't think we have quite enough. Okay, well, we'll see how close we get. Oh, there's... Oh, we lost Gemini capsule. It just popped out. I think it was reading some of the fuel from it as part of our Delta V, which gave us a false... falsely high Delta V reading. So we didn't quite make orbit, but again, uh, we were only 65% fueled in low Earth orbit, so... Yeah, we probably could have done the whole deal up to back to lunar orbit and maybe a docking with something at that point. So that's quite satisfactory anyway. But that whole platform business and the cargo bay deal needs some work. Anyway, so this is how it is. And our tribute to Apollo 11 continues in its own weird way. <laughs> Nothing to do with the Apollo command module. Uh, but anyway... Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.